The First Battle of Geonosis was the very start of the Clone Wars and the Republic's first victory in the conflict. For the Republic, it was a lifesaver, an early bit of momentum that allowed them to survive serious disadvantages in the first stage of the war. But the Republic may not have done nearly as well in the battle were it not for the effort of four clone commandos. The men of Delta Squad played a crucial role in the battle, and in this video we're going to be telling that story. Attention, Sergeant on deck! For 10 years, the Special Operations Brigade's clone commandos were raised to fight for the Republic. In that time, many of them had developed their own particular skills and preferred roles. Delta 62, or Scorch, was a gung-ho demolitions expert, a connoisseur in high explosives. Delta 07, or Sev, was an elite sniper noted for his dark sense of humor and eagerness to kill. Delta 40, or Fixer, was a no-nonsense, by-the-book slicer, skilled in the use of vibroblades. And lastly, there was Delta 38, Boss, the versatile leader of the squad. They were each a piece of a whole entity, Delta Squad. In 22 BBY, Delta Squad, together with the entire Special Operations Brigade, was deployed on Geonosis in a preemptive strike against the CIS droid army. All 10,000 clone commandos saw action that day, and nearly half of them died, thanks to poor tactics on the part of the Jedi Generals. Many commando squads had been deployed directly to the battlefield, a grievous misuse of resources that many Republic strategists would later take issue with the Jedi over. But Delta Squad wasn't destined for the front lines that day. They had a special assignment, the assassination of Sun Fak, the chief lieutenant of Geonosian Archduke, Poggle the Lesser. Fak was Poggle's right-hand man, or rather right-hand Genosian, and the Republic wanted him out of the picture as soon as possible. To minimize casualties, Delta Squad was split up for the drop on Geonosis. Boss and Scorch deployed into the Petronaki Arena, where the battle had begun, while Fixer and Sev deployed elsewhere along the squad's planned route. After meeting up in the war-torn arena, Boss and Scorch made their way into the Geonosian catacombs, taking down battle droids and Geonosian warriors as they went. They met up with Fixer shortly after entering enemy territory, and the three commandos then headed toward a nearby Geonosian command center, where they believed Sun Fak to be. After clearing out a hangar of Geonosian starfighters on the way, the three commandos met up with Sev outside of Sun Fak's command center. The squad charged into the command center and opened fire, but Sun Fak escaped and beat a hasty retreat to a nearby hangar where his personal starfighter was waiting. Delta squad pursued, and at length, Sev was able to take out several of the fighters' critical systems with sniper rounds, causing the ship to crash. Sun Fak died on impact, and Delta Squad's first mission was complete. But that was just the start of Delta Squad's adventures on Genosis. After successfully throwing Genosian leadership into chaos, the commandos were ordered to descend deeper into the catacombs where they were to infiltrate and destroy a droid factory. Another commando squad had originally been assigned to the mission, but they had been wiped out by the Genosians, and so it was up to Delta Squad to succeed where they had failed. To get at the factory, they first had to disable a signal jammer that was preventing Republic Strategic Command from getting a good scan of the facility. To that end, Delta Squad made their way through the catacombs to the Stalgazian Hive, where they met stiff resistance from the Genosians. Formidable Genosian elites were mustered against them, and as they made their way through a hatchery, the squad even found themselves under attack from Genosian lava. Despite these obstacles, however, the commandos were able to make their way to the signal jammer and destroy it, allowing communications with their strategic advisor to resume. From there, the commandos made their way into the factory through the ventilation system. Once inside, they were able to locate a computer terminal with the factory schematics and send this information back to the advisor. The advisor pinpointed two key weak points that could be destroyed to bring down the factory, a pair of power conduits, which Delta Squad set about destroying. Despite a substantial droid security presence, the commandos were able to fight their way to the power conduits and set explosives on them, causing a chain reaction that destabilized the factory. The commandos were able to escape thanks to the timely arrival of an LAAT gunship, which wasted no time in flying them over to their next objective. In destroying the droid factory, Delta Squad dealt a serious blow to the Separatist forces fighting on the surface. By that point in the battle, 
Republic forces were quickly pushing toward the Separatist grounded transports, and the Confederacy needed droid reinforcements urgently. The destruction of the factory meant that they wouldn't be getting any, and the turmoil Delta Squad had caused in the Geonosian hives meant that the Geonosians were too disorganized to mount a serious opposition to the Republic on the surface as well. These developments put the Geonosians and their Separatist allies on the back foot, allowing the Republic to begin assaults on the Confederacy's landed core ships. The Republic's primary objective on Geonosis was to neutralize the transports the CIS had landed on Geonosis to pick up battle droid shipments, with the hope that it would nip the threat of the CIS droid army in the bud. By the time the Republic was actually in range of these landing zones, many of the craft had already taken off, particularly the lighter hard cell class and diamond class transports. But the Federation's core ships were designed to be able to take a pounding, so they delayed their departure opting to finish loading up their cargoes of droids before fleeing the planet. Delta Squad's final mission in Genosis was to infiltrate one of these core ships and retrieve its launch codes, which the Republic hoped it could use to stall the ships and prevent them from taking off. The ship they had been assigned to infiltrate had already been disabled, and better yet, it was isolated from the main landing areas, giving Delta Squad a solid chance of actually getting in. But complications quickly arose on the flight over. The commando's gunship was forced to drop them off further away from the ship than was originally planned, due to the presence of a Geonosian anti-air cannon. Delta Squad fought through the battle droids and Geonosians in the canyons on the way to the anti-aircraft gun, and despite fierce resistance, the commandos managed to get into the fortress that housed the cannon. They sealed themselves in to prevent Geonosian reinforcements from launching a counter-attack, and then, on the advice of Scorch, they planted explosives on the cannon's loading mechanisms. The bombs successfully disabled the cannon, allowing LAAT gunships to provide air support as Delta Squad moved on to their main objective. After reaching the core ship, the commandos discovered that its main entrance was shielded and inaccessible. While a nearby secondary entrance was also shielded, it was much more exposed and so Delta Squad opted to secure it, confident that the Republic gunships could blast it open. After the commandos destroyed an advanced dwarf spider droid that had been deployed to guard this entrance, an LAAT swooped in and did exactly that, allowing Delta Squad to infiltrate the core ship. Once inside, the commandos split up, each tasked with disabling one of the core ship's key systems. While Boss hit the super battle droid storage racks, Fixer took out the ship's primary power conduit, Sev targeted repulsor lift systems, and Scorch blew up a coolant intake valve. All four commandos were successful in their various missions, and the core ship suffered critical damage. On one of the core ship's higher levels, Delta Squad reunited and made their way to the bridge where they were to retrieve the ship's launch codes before making their escape. By this point, ship security was well aware of their presence, and the commandos found themselves fighting droidikas on top of standard CIS units. As the core ship fell apart around their ears, Delta Squad stormed the craft's bridge. There, Fixer got to work slicing the ship's mainframe, while Boss, Scorch, and Sev held off security which sent waves of droidikas and super battle droids to the bridge. Fixer managed to retrieve the launch codes in the nick of time, allowing Delta Squad to retreat to one of the airlocks near the back of the bridge. The commandos escaped the doomed core ship shortly before it exploded, their last mission complete. With the core ship launch codes acquired, the Republic was able to stall the launch of several core ships, allowing SPHAT artillery to destroy them. Most of the core ships originally present on Genosis escaped the battle, but in total, 14 were destroyed by Republic forces, in large part thanks to Delta Squad. With their missions on Genosis complete, Delta Squad returned to the Republic assault ship Prosecutor, where they were debriefed and commended for their actions. They were one of the only commando squads to not lose a member on Genosis, an indicator of their effectiveness. On Genosis, they had crippled Genosian leadership, cut off droid reinforcements, and prevented millions of battle droids from leaving the planet, all told. The impact of all this can't be overstated, as it didn't just help the Republic win the battle, it gave them an edge in the first few months of the war. So that's the story of how Delta Squad played a key role in the first battle of Genosis. But what do you think? Would you like to hear more about one of our favorite Republic Commando squads? Let us know your thoughts and more in the comment section below. 
And just before clicking the next suggested video about Palpatine's sex life, make sure you check out some of our links in the description below, including our brand new channel called The Braved, where we delve deep into history to bring you some of the most badass people from all different eras. And if you're more into music, check out our Relax Jack, where we use a lot of the music produced there on the channel here. And if you want access to a behind the scenes Discord where you can chat to myself and the team members who make this video, consider donating to the Patreon. Also, if you want to join us in our Geetzee's Gaming Network and Geetzee's main Discord, all those links are in the description below. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.